something from the Lord. Amen. At this time, our usher is going to help us come and receive the Sunday evening tithe and offering. You can give online at www.mytcc.org slash Junction City KS. You can give on our cash app, dollar sign NTCC Junction City. This goes to meet the works of the Lord. Amen. So you give and the Lord will bless you for it. Brother Ron, so would you please pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity give unto you. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings about to receive in this service. And we ask you, Lord, to bless a gift and a giver according to your word. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. <laughs> church on Thursday. Amen. And have a good week in the Lord. Amen. Tonight I'd like to direct your attention to the gospel according to Mark. Mark chapter 7 and I want to start reading in verse 32. Mark 7 and verse 32. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Ephatha, that is, be open. And straightway his ears were open and the string of his tongue was loosed. And he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man but the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal they published it. And were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. And I'd like to direct your attention back to verse 35 for a text tonight. And straightway his ears were open, and the string of his tongue was loose, and he spake plain. And with the help of the Lord tonight, I'd like to preach a thought or title of a message opening of the deaf and dumb opening of the deaf and dumb pastor would you please pray sir finally god we thank you for your goodness tonight your love and your mercy we ask you now god to bless your mind as he preaches that which you lay upon his heart help us to hear what you have for us tonight as a right response to your spirit in christ my name we pray amen amen when you are deaf you cannot hear pretty Pretty self-explanatory, right? You cannot hear what is going on around you. And if something is happening, an emergency, or someone perhaps is trying to get attention, maybe saying some trying to say something to you, perhaps uh, yelling at you, we have uh, sirens, you know, the emergency you have sirens and different things. So when a person is deaf and they cannot hear these different things, they cannot hear, they cannot understand what is going on. They can only see it. When you are dumb, when you have this uh, impediment in your speech, when you cannot speak or, or talk correctly, or cannot talk at all, you are, it's hard for you to communicate. You have to write, or perhaps you may, um, different ones might use sign language. They uh, point or they try to find a way to communicate because the lines of their communication have been cut off. 
If encountered by this, um, this problem, this deafness, or this dumbness, they have been, uh, they have been hampered, this thing is stopping them from being able to fully express or communicate with others. Not as the way tonight it is in sin. Uh, many people, this world is in sin, this world is in wickedness, and they are, are deaf and they are blind to Almighty God. They were like this man here who was brought unto Jesus, and he, uh, he was deaf. He had this impediment in his speech, and they, and they brought him to Jesus. To, why? Because Jesus was able to do something. He knew Jesus could heal this man. Jesus could touch the, this man's life and cause him to be able to be made whole again. Amen. And many people, though, they are living in sin. This world is in sin, and they are deaf and blind to God. Blind to uh, maybe not uh, uh, physically blind, but there there is a spiritual blindness in a person's life. They are blind to the truth. Many times we were going our own way. Think about it. We were living in, in this world and we were uh, doing our own thing. We were thinking, of, oh, my way is right. So that's the way many people are. They think their way is right. They think, of, oh, everything I'm doing, it's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 2. The Bible tells us that every man, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord honors the hearts. Some even begin to dare to claim what? That all roads lead to heaven. Don't judge me because of, um, don't judge this person because they follow this religion. Don't judge this person uh, because they're doing this. You know, uh, all roads lead to heaven. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What? No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see, tonight, many people are blind to the truth. Uh, they've been blinded by sin. They've been blinded by their own uh, uh, things that have happened in their life. And they caused them not to be able to see that, man, my way is not going to get it to heaven. It's only through Jesus Christ. It's only through Jesus. And so they're deaf and they're blind to Almighty God. They're trying to compare this man as this man was deaf. He, he couldn't, yes, he could probably physically see. Yes, he could physically see, but he could not hear. And so, in a sense, he was pretty much blind. He, was, he didn't have no way of knowing really what was going on around him as well as he could have. Many people, when we're in sin, we were what? We were blind to the ending of our life. We were blind to what awaited us at the end of life's journey. How many times have people said that, oh, I'm good. Oh, I don't need this uh, religion. I don't need church. You know, I, I'm okay. Everything's fine. Why do I need to go and do this? Why do I need to follow this religion? Why do I need to go to church? Why do I need to uh, be in the hospital? Why do I need to read my Bible? You know, everything's okay between me and God. Why do I need to accept this one and call, call Jesus? We need to accept him because we were lost in our sins. We were dying on our way to hell, but Jesus came to die for us. He died on that cross. Why? So that we didn't have to die and go to hell, but that we could be saved, that we could be uh, born again by the Spirit of Almighty God. But many times people are blind. They're blind to the truth. They question everything. They say, oh, I'm good. I don't need to go to church. Oh, I, I have church in my room or my barracks or I have church in my house. You know, everything's okay. And I can make it to heaven uh, uh, going to church uh, and being in my house, just praying with my, uh, by myself. You know, I can make it to heaven. But why does the Bible tell us not to forsake this sin of ourselves? Why does the Bible tell us uh, we need to come to the house of the Lord and we need to see Jesus? We need to hear the word of God. We need to uh, uh, feast on the spiritual word of Almighty God. Because they're blind, blinded by sin, blinded by the enemy of our soul. You see, tonight the end of life with those without Jesus is death. It's an eternity spent, separated from God, and any hope of salvation. You see, tonight there is no second chances for an individual who, who does not accept uh, Jesus Christ. There is no do-overs in eternity. Uh, it matters right now what we decide to do. It matters right now what we make up in our minds. Uh, i got to get to the Lord. I need a touch of my body. I need a touch of my mind. Why? Because I need something from Almighty God. There is no second chances. Yet people think, oh, uh, uh, I can go to purgatory. 
Or I can go and I can do this. I can uh, uh, do so many works and I, I'll be okay. You know, Jesus, uh, he, he will look past my faults and failures. If we don't accept Jesus, if we don't repent of our sins, if we don't ask Jesus into our heart and our life, we are going to die lost without God. And there will be no second chances. And so many times people are what? Blind to the truth. And then they're deaf to the call of Almighty God. This man was deaf and he, he couldn't hear. And, and Jesus, he, called, he called out, calls out to many different people, including the disciples. He called out how many times to the disciples and to the multitudes to what? Follow me. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, it reads this, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and what? Follow me. But we don't want to deny ourselves. We don't want to uh, surrender. We don't want to commit ourselves to Almighty God. We want to do things our own way. We want to live our own life. We want to have that attitude of no man, no person is going to tell me what to do. No God is going to tell me what to do. Who is God that he's going to uh, think he can run my life? Who is God? He's the one what, that created the heavens and the earth. He's the one that breathed in the spirit of life into a, a man of man to keep what, a living soul. He's the one that's in control of it all. But if we don't accept Jesus, we will die lost without him. So he calls out to many, he calls out to us, he says, follow me, follow me. And he, you know, in times where you can think about him, uh, uh, perhaps we are the ones who are, are deaf, we are the ones that have that spiritual deafness in our life, and we're, we're not listening to God, and God's trying to get our attention. Perhaps he's waving his hands at us, perhaps he's trying to jump in front of us and say, hey, wake up, hey, listen to what I'm trying to tell you, hey, there's something uh, that is wrong in your life, you need to fix it, you turn around and go the way that I tell you to go, follow me, why, because his way leads unto life, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he is alive tonight for each and every person in this world, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, and he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, Matthew chapter 8 and verse 22. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. Mark chapter 10, verse 21. Then Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. Many times throughout the whole Gospels, how many times did he tell them, follow me, follow me. We have to be able, we have to realize, we have to wake up and say, you know what, I need to follow Jesus. Uh, I need to allow Jesus to be the one that I follow, that is, that is the leader of my life, the one that uh, directs me as, a, as, a, as, a, as I'm a ship. Uh, Jesus is going to direct me in my life. He's going to direct me in, in the path of righteousness. I need to allow Jesus to, to be the anchor of my soul. Because if we're not following him, we're going into destruction. You see, tonight God pleads with the souls of men and women every single day. He pleads and he pleads. He calls out to them uh, as we go out and we invite people to church. As we call out and we call people and remind them, hey, uh, that if you need to come to the house, Lord, is it not God pleading with the souls of men and women saying, hey, uh, I have something for you. Hey, I see what you're going through. Uh, I understand what you're facing, uh, but I have the solution. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the one that can save your soul. He's the one uh, that can fix your situation calls out. He's called out to many people, trying to warn them of the coming danger. He sends people in their way. He tells, sends people, but many times people just ignore it. You see, tonight your soul, your life, it hangs in the balance as the illustration of a lighthouse is used what, to draw, as the lighthouse is used to what, um, draw ships there, as a beacon of hope for the ships to know where they're going to go so they can avoid the, the sharp rocks and the, the edges of the, of the land so that they don't cra crash on the land and, and perish. Jesus is our lighthouse tonight. He's the lighthouse what, for the entire world. He sits at, uh, it's, been, it's been shared many times, he sits at hell's doorstep and he's beckoning people to come to him. He's beckoning people to say, hey, don't continue the way you're going. Hey, 
wake up. Uh, allow me to, to guide you. Allow me, follow me. Uh, I have the, the, the life eternal. I have life eternal for all of eternity. I have something for you. And so this man was brought to Jesus. Death, an impotent, an impediment, having an impediment in his speech, you're pretty much dumb. They brought him to Jesus. And the Bible tells us that in verse 33, he said that he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue. You see, Jesus got the man away from the multitude. Jesus got him away from the influences of what the crowd thought. Imagine what this crowd may have been saying. Imagine what this crowd as this man was brought uh, to Jesus and perhaps to maybe begin to doubt saying, oh, Jesus can't touch this man. Jesus can't heal this man. Jesus can't do this miracle. Look at this man. He, he is not only deaf, but he can't even talk either. How is Jesus going to uh, touch this man? Perhaps those around him, maybe he, he read lips, perhaps he began to read the lips of others around him and he began to maybe perhaps get discouraged. Many times you see in a crowd, people are what? Influenced by those around them. How many times of us, we've been around friends, or so-called friends, and they're doing their drinking or perhaps they're doing this or that and they're going out partying and they're having a good time. They're saying, hey, come on with us, come on. And that peer pressure begins to, uh, to pull on us and begin to say, you know, it's okay. What's wrong with going out and, uh, and uh, uh, kicking back a few drinks? What's so wrong with uh, going out and partying, going to the clubs? What's so wrong with all of that? And it's hard as well. People are what? Influenced by those around them. The way those around them conduct themselves and think will what, no, doubt, no doubt cause us to become and do the same things. We'll, we'll think the same way. We'll think and do the same things as them. But the, the Bible tells us what the, to put on the mind of Christ, the, the Christ Jesus. We got to get Jesus on the inside and allow Jesus to be the center of our life. And allow Jesus to be the one that influences us. Not the world, not those around us, not those at work, not those uh, in our family, but no, Jesus has to be the most important thing to us. And say, you know what, Jesus, guide me, direct my life. It's been shared what? If one hangs around a thief, one eventually becomes one, right? You hang around someone who steals, then you're going to become, you're going to be joined in with them. Either you're around someone who's always lying, you're, you're eventually going to be lying too. It's the same thing in every aspect of our life. We have to get around the right people. That's why it's important that we come to church. That's why it's important that we come and we be around the fellowship. And we get in and say, you know what? I need Jesus to guide me. I need to be around those who are like-minded and are on their way to heaven. See, Jesus had to get this man away from the crowd. Jesus has to sometimes uh, get us out and away from what makes us comfortable as well as others in order to get our attention. What are we so focused upon? And this man perhaps is no doubt focused upon this disability and realizing and maybe thinking, oh, there's no way I'm gonna escape this predicament. There's no way I'm gonna escape what I'm going through. How is this man, I, I, I've been told uh, I just from what I've seen and I, I see what's going on. Someone's trying to get me to go to see this man called Jesus, but can he really do anything in my life? His attention was focused no doubt, perhaps on his own disabilities, on his own problems. Who is Jesus to him? Many times, well, we get comfortable around our friends. We get comfortable around our family and around our job. And when we, want, when we are comfortable, we don't want to change. Nobody likes to change. Nobody likes change in their life. But when you leave home, perhaps for the very first time, it's, it's kind of unnerving, perhaps, right? Because you're, you're out there on your own. You don't have uh, your family to back you up. You don't have your family right there at your side. You don't have someone you can uh, just run back to know you're on your own. And so it's a little bit, it's uncomfortable. And Jesus sometimes has to get us away from the, what makes us so comfortable. He has to be, uh, in order to open up our eyes and say, man, I, I need Jesus. I need Jesus to do something in my life. We have to be the ones to break out of our comfort zone. Do what maybe for us feels uncomfortable. Well, we think, what, what will others say? What will others think or do? What, what, uh, 
oh, what will they uh, say about me if I go and I start serving God each and every day? What is more important, though, tonight is what does God have to say about it? It doesn't matter what your family says. It doesn't matter what your co-workers may say. It doesn't matter what the world may say. The world may say that Jesus is dead, that Jesus is not real. They may say that God didn't create the heavens and the earth. They may say that uh, we're just a bunch of fools and we're just uh, uh, having a crutch. But you know what? I met Jesus one day when I was lost and on my way to hell. Jesus had mercy on my soul when I was lost and I didn't know God in a reality. Jesus came my way and said, I love you. I care more about you than anything else in this world. I have something for you. I have something for you. What's more important is what God has to say. The world may find fault. The world may criticize. But God has it all in control. As we, me and the brother were talking, God has it all in control. The world may fall down. The, the, the places around us, we may become a, a destroyed nation. But God is still the one in control. God is still the one who has the, the world in his hands. He's still the one that's in control of it all. And we see how... When Jesus got him away from not only the multitude, Jesus had to get him away from himself. Yes, how many times does self get in the way of all of us? It gets in all of our ways. All we want to do is what focus on our own pleasures, focus on our own lives. We become what distracted. We become distracted from the things of God. When we have to focus, we have to get rid of the self. Get rid of our own self, uh, our own pride, and say, you know what? I don't know everything. I don't know uh, how to fix it, but I know one who can fix my life. I know one who can help me. I know one who can touch my life and make things better. Because what self becomes doubts and unbelief. Because we're so focused on our what? Ourselves. We don't believe our lives can be changed at all. No doubt this man thought, I'll never be able to hear. I'll never be able to talk. I'm too bad of a person. My life isn't in order. My finances aren't put together. I don't have a family. I don't have this. I don't have the job that I want. To. Why don't you just let it all go and allow Jesus to be the center of your life and realize, man, if I just serve God and give God everything in my life, I know that Jesus will take care of me. He'll give me what the desires of my heart. He'll give me what I have need of. It may not be everything that this world has to offer, but I have one thing that is Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing in this world tonight. It's Jesus. So Jesus had to get him away from himself. Why? To change his thinking. To change his thinking. He knew, no doubt, he didn't see a way out of the situation. He didn't see a way out of, of what he was going through. How many times, perhaps, we can uh, take many examples throughout the Gospels and throughout the whole Bible. How? But people didn't see. How was God going to make a, a way of escape? How was God going to uh, fix this situation? They didn't see the uh, what was going to happen, but what the Bible tells us, uh, that they had faith. They believed God and accounted for what? For righteousness unto them. They had faith. They knew what? I don't know. I don't see the outcome of my life. I don't see all the solutions, uh, but I know Jesus Christ is the answer. I know God is the one in control. I know God is the one that's going to fix the situation. Yeah. Didn't see a way out. Now all of a sudden, what? Here is Jesus taking him out of the way. Putting his fingers in his ears, spinning and touching his tongue. And perhaps this man is thinking, man, what is going on? Why is Jesus? What? This is weird. I've never had anybody do this to me. I've never had someone just stick their fingers in my ears. I've never had someone just uh, touch my tongue. Or I've never seen someone do this before. What is he doing? To us, it would be crazy and strange. He'd probably look at the person and say, get away from me. What are you doing? You have COVID or something, right? What was this man thinking when was happening? Or even before it happened? This is insane. I don't understand. We may not understand all that's going on in our life. We may not understand all that God is doing in our life, but we'll just trust it. And we'll just believe and we'll just uh, accept Christ that everything is going to be okay. Constantly, Jesus was what changing the thinking of the multitudes. Constantly, 
He was teaching her constantly. Jesus was uh, doing miracle after miracle, helping to show them that, that he is the Christ. In Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. When they thought that, the, that it was impossible, how uh, Mary and Martha, what, the brother Lazarus was dead. He was in the tomb for four days. For many days, he had already been in the tomb laying. And they said, Lord, he stinketh. When they told him, he told him to roll away the stone. Surely he's dead. There's no way he's coming back. But he said, you know what? Jesus just told him, hey, if you'll just have faith. What did I tell you? I gave you a promise. I gave you an answer. I'm the solution. We may not see everything that's going on. We may not believe how is God going to fix it all. But you know what? With men, all things are impossible. With God, things are possible. And we'll just trust in Jesus Christ. We need to allow God what to change us spiritually. Instead of seeing what can't be done, God can't change me. God can't save me. You don't understand. I, I've, I've done so many wrong things. I've, I've done things that are inexcusable. I've done things that I, I can't even mention. Don't you realize God sees it all and he still loves you, he still cares about you, and he's willing to forgive you of your sins. Well, you can't be changed, but with God, he can. He can change your life in a moment, in an instant. And then finally we see the power of Almighty God and how he changed this man's life. And when he took him away, he took him aside from a multitude. He looked up to heaven right inside and said unto him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. The power of Almighty God working in this man's life. Jesus, uh, the Son of Almighty God. What? This man, the Bible tells us what? And straightway his ears were opened. His ears were open. Now he could hear all that was going on. You could say in a sense that his sight had been restored. Or once he couldn't hear, he couldn't uh, understand what people were saying. He could perhaps uh, physically see, uh, but he was still in a sense blind to the things that were going on around him. But when Jesus opened his ears, uh, uh, all of a sudden now he could uh, understand. He could hear the sounds, no doubt. The first time he heard someone uh, laugh, perhaps the first time he heard someone begin to praise the Lord. Perhaps it was his first time hearing somebody saying, uh, hey, how are you doing? How does it feel? Perhaps to be the laugh with tears of joy. Realize, man, I can hear again. I have been touched by Almighty God. God has done something in my life. When you have opened up your heart to Jesus, He will restore you. And he will give you what you have been searching for. Whatever you're searching for tonight, whatever you're going through tonight, uh, God can, if you'll just open up your heart to Jesus, if you'll allow just allow Jesus on the inside of your heart, he'll give you the very desires of your heart. He'll give you what you've been searching for. Whatever you're searching for tonight, whatever you're going through, Jesus can give you what you have need of. See, this man, he didn't receive just a partial healing, but he was what, fully restored. He could fully hear what was going on. He could hear perhaps the horses around him, the carriages, or the different sounds. Perhaps he heard uh, the person at the market making and cry out, uh, talking about, hey, come get your, uh, your bread, or come get your food. Perhaps he didn't realize, man, I can hear something. I'm, I'm not just partially uh, deaf, but now I can fully hear. I can fully see. You see what the world had to say now no longer had a hold on him. Because his ears have been opened. It's the same way when we come to Jesus. When Jesus touches you, the world and sin no longer has any hold on you. It no longer has any chains on you. There is no longer, you are free. The Bible says, well, who the Son sets free is free indeed. You are no longer, uh, you were once a sinner, but well, I came party to receive from our Lord. A song we sing, uh, we've been set free by Almighty God. We've been set free, we've been cleansed, we've been changed uh, by the power of Almighty God. You're free. No longer do you hear what the world has to think or say or even does. Nobody can tell this man that Jesus wasn't real. Nobody can tell this man that, that Jesus couldn't heal him. He experienced it for himself. There is, you see tonight, there is a greater power 
living on the inside of you. When you accept Jesus, God gives you the power to live above sin. You don't have to be under the controls of it. You don't have to be under the influences of it. You can be made free tonight. We saw how his ears were open and the string of his tongue was loosed and he spake plain. What had been tied, bound up, was what? Now free. The chains of sin no longer having any hold. The burdens that you have carried up for so long, tonight you can let go of them. The power, see, the power of God is greater than any sin. It's greater than any problem in our lives. Think about the, I begin to think about the demoniac of Gadarene. How he had so many demons on the inside of that they called him legion. And if they would try to bind him up, they would try to bind him with chains and fetters and chains, but the Bible tells us that he could not be bound. He could not be put under a hole because he was under the influence of these demons. But when Jesus spoke to those demons to leave and he commanded them, you need to depart. Those demons had to listen. It is the same way the person, the man, or the life of a man or a woman, when we allow Jesus on the inside, he commands the sin to be removed. No longer are we bound up by sin. No longer are we under the influence of it. But now it's been, we've been washed. We've been set free. We have been made whiter than snow by the blood of Almighty God tonight. He can speak, this man. He can speak what the words of hope. Of the Savior, how this man, what is it? His, when everything was healed, Jesus had charged him, hey, go, don't tell, don't tell anybody. But the more he charged them, the Bible tells us so more the great deal they published it. They couldn't keep it on the inside. They had to speak, they had to tell someone else, don't you know what Jesus did for this man? Don't you realize what Jesus has done? Look what the Lord has done. Why he healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. When I was lost and on my way to hell, what? Jesus saved me. Jesus has cleaned me up. Jesus has made me whole. It's a night. If you don't know Jesus, he can do the same thing in your life. He can clean you up. He can make you whole. He can change your life around. He was what? He had... Words of hope, of the Savior Jesus, of faith. He had faith and believe that takes faith tonight. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He was a witness what to the power of God in his life. No doubt the words of praise begin to exit forth from his mouth. The moment that Jesus touched him and he realized, man, I've been made whole. And when we have experienced Jesus but for ourselves, we will praise God. Not just because someone tells you, not, someone, not just because someone gets up here and says, hey, we need to praise God. No, you want to do it from the abundance of your heart. You want to say, you know what? I realize just how good God has been to me. I realize that God has been so good to me. I want to lift up a word of praise. I want to magnify the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. As the musicians begin to come, what about you tonight? What has you in chains? What are you burdened down with? Are you free from the chains of sin? Are you free from the burdens that have weighed you down? You see, tonight you don't have to be deaf and blind to God. But if you'll just allow Jesus to touch you, allow Jesus into your life, allow Jesus into your heart, you too can see the power of Almighty God working in your life. You can realize you can be like this man as he has no doubt he began to publish, he began to keep, he couldn't keep it to himself, but he had to tell someone else, man, look what God has done for me. With every head bowed and eyes closed, with reverence to the Lord.